Good morning. It's Monday morning. I apologize for not getting the program out yesterday. I did a special program on Saturday, and uh, then I slept late yesterday. I had to get up and get to church, and I had was at another church last night, the guest church in, uh, in Reed Spring, playing a song, visiting with some people, and and uh, and so I was uh, all around yesterday and never got the program done. So I'm going to get back on track. I, I have rebuked myself and I have repented. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing this for brownie points. I just need to get it done. I'm under compulsion to get it done. Uh, we're going to be in the seventh chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And uh, he again is pronouncing this judgment on Judah. In the last installment of this, God was reaffirming to Jeremiah that nobody's going to listen to him and that, that his ministry is not going to produce a lot of fruit. The point of ministry is to do what God says. The re results are not up to us. No, the results are up to him. You know, if God tells you to go preach to people who won't listen to you and, you know, they're going to hate you, then that's what you do. I have drawn a similar duty here in the last days. That is what I do. I go to churches no really giant churches anymore because, <laughs> because of the things I say. But, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to build. It's hard to have a five-year plan when you believe that Jesus is coming next week. He is coming soon. And that is what I preach. I preach to the small remnant of churches and the small remnant within churches who hunger and thirst after righteousness and long for the return of Christ and who cannot be conned, who cannot be stroked, who cannot be misled because their faith is in Christ and their foundation is built upon the word of God. And so they have nothing to fear. But the rest of the world is being cast about by every wind of doctrine. Uh, if you're listening to this program, uh, I'm sure that most of you are well grounded or you wouldn't listen. You couldn't stand to listen. It would hurt too bad. See, what the truth does to people is it scares them. It shines the light on sin. If the sin that I'm preaching against is not in your life, then, you, then you're happy with what I say. But if the sin that I preach against is in your life, you're not happy and you want to kill me on some level or another. You want to stop me. So anyway, that's where we are. God told Jeremiah he was going to fail. And... Uh, who knows, maybe that's why God is having me preach Jeremiah here at the end of the world. I don't know. Um, there are many similarities. Now, regrouping back to Saturday since we missed you, uh, back to Friday since I had a special program uh, on the Laodicean Church on Monday, on a little, 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 uh, Saturday, and no program yesterday. We have to reach back to Friday. And we'll pick up with verse 16. That's what we the lesson was on Friday. Chapter 7 of the book of Jeremiah, verse 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up thy cry, nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. God said, don't pray for them. I won't listen. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Look at what they're doing, Jeremiah. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. 
Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. That's where we left it off the other day. God told Jeremiah that don't talk to me about this people. I will not listen. Just give them the message. And that's what he does. In verse 21, God is speaking again through Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. 7 verse 21. Put your burnt offerings under your sacrifice and eat the flesh. You know, have a barbecue, eat it, have fun, eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow you die. Verse 22, For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning offerings or sacrifices. You see, God didn't set up a sacramental system when they came out of Egypt. God didn't set up offerings, wave offerings, burnt offerings, peace offerings, sheep offerings, wave offerings. He didn't set up any of that when they came out of Egypt. He called them to himself to the mount, the mount of God, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. But he didn't tell them to build an altar and burn sacrifices to him. I didn't tell him that. He said, For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. We didn't talk about offerings and sacrifices, Jeremiah. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice. Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk ye in all the ways I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. God spoke to the whole nation of Israel who stood at the foot of Mount Sinai. They saw him up there. This is in the book of Exodus chapters uh, 19 and 20. They saw uh, the smoke up on the fire up on the mount. They heard the voice of God talking to them. He gave them the Ten Commandments before a long time before. <laughs> You know, this is before he wrote them in stone and gave them to Moses on the top of the mount. He was telling the nation of Israel, Moses and Aaron and the whole nation of Israel, he was telling them, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. You know. Uh, he started giving them the Ten Commandments. He gave them to them verbally. And then he says, he says, obey me. And I'll be your father, you'll be my children. Nothing mentioned about a sacrifice. He said, you just follow me. And he told everybody, not just Moses. Well, the people came up to Moses and they said, hey, you know, we're scared to death. We can't stand to have God talk to us. Let him talk to you and then you tell us what he said. We'll, we'll do whatever he says. Well, by the time Moses goes up into the mount for 40 days and 40 nights and comes down with the Ten Commandments engraved in the two tablets of stone by the hand of God, uh, which hand also cuts them out of the rock and gives them to Moses. By the time he gets back down the hill, they're all having a party and committing adultery and having like fornication and an orgy and a feast and worshiping 
these golden calves that they made, worshiping this false god. Yeah. Moses, you talk to God and just tell us what he said and we'll do anything that he says. Well, he'd already told them. He told them not to have any God before him. He told them not to make any graven image. He told them not to take the name of the Lord in vain. He told them to honor their father and their mother. He told them not to lie. Told them not to steal, told them not to commit adultery, told them not to bear false witness, told them not to covet. Told them to keep the Sabbath. I realize those are out of order, but my brain's out of order sometimes. I got them all in there. He just told them that, and they've already broken just about all of them. By the time Moses gets down the hill. God is telling you, I didn't say anything about sacrifice. I didn't ask you to bring me sacrifice. I didn't ask you to have burnt offerings. I didn't say anything about that. I just said, obey my voice. And I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well with you. And he said, Moses, we're scared of God. Let him talk to you and you talk to us. As soon as Moses goes up the hill to talk to God, well, the people down below commence with a big party. They're having a regular back and now. It's like Monday night football for two hundred, you know, for a couple of million people. Got the pig in the ground and the beer on ice, and all my rowdy friends are coming over tonight. Well, there you go. There they were. That's what they did. Well, in verse 24, God says through Jeremiah, But they hearkened not. They didn't listen to me. Nor inclined their ear. They didn't try to listen to me. but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart. They just did what they wanted to do and called it good and went backward and not forward. God delivered them from Egypt. He delivered all of them, body and soul. Though their body was out of Egypt, their soul went back. Oh, we longed to sit by the flesh pots where we did eat and had the desire of our heart. They were slaves. Sin is slavery. They wanted to go back. They wanted to go back. Verse 25, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of Egypt, unto this day, I have sent even sent unto you all my servants the prophets daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me. It's like they didn't hearken to my voice, they didn't hearken to my prophets. Nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck, and they did worse than their fathers. Because you see, after the call at Mount Sinai, after the golden calf episode, after the repentance, then God gave Moses the law and the tabernacle and the sacrificial system. After he just called them to obey his voice. If they would obey, there would have been no sacrificial system. There would have just been his people. But, of course, God knows all things, and he knew that wasn't going to happen. But that is where it came down. And it says, They hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear. And they did worse 
and their father. And I know one thing for sure, we're doing worse than our fathers. Now God is talking to Jeremiah again, you see. In verse 27, Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. You're stuck. The problem is sin, but they won't be healed. The problem is sin, but they won't obey. The problem is sin, but they won't listen. The problem is sin, but they rebel. That's the deal. And again, that's what we have today. Men like me travel around and beg people to come to Christ. And in my case, most of the time, to come back to Christ, to come back home. To live the calling that God had placed upon their lives. To be soul winners be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Called on them. Us. Will you listen? Will you incline your ear? Will you surrender? Will you obey? You see, that's always the question. It doesn't matter what we're dealing with, what what uh, theology or piece of work or a step in everyday life. It doesn't matter what it is. All that matters, the question always comes down to obedience. Will we or will we not obey God? If the answer is yes, blessing if the answer is no cursing the path is from front of you it's always whether to obey or not whether to obey or not choose life come to Jesus God bless you